So, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video in English today about a tool or a new tool that I got which is Ultra Weather XP. And uh, what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to um, have a closer look um, and also compare performance uh, between Vanilla x -Plane, optimized uh, to a certain degree uh, to the settings that I feel I should have for a certain type of flying and uh, I will compare the standard vanilla weather of X-Plane with what we are going to get with Ultra uh, um, Weather XP. So that's uh, that's the idea of this video. Um, now I have to say that I did an awful lot of tweaking um, here to get the settings right. Um, there was a lot of um, <coughs> failed attempts and uh, the situation is also that when you do one kind of flying with one kind of parameters uh, and visuals uh, it might not be suitable. The settings that you come up with might not be suitable with other types of flying. So what you see here is what I call my airline flying kind of profile and uh, it's actually no point that you ask me for the settings because these settings are so specific to my situation, to my um, expectations and uh, I have done some programming in order to get uh, things a bit better like I changed the iLodu scripts uh, to a certain degree. Uh, I also changed the settings uh, TXT of x -Plane to have more options and more fine-grained options. These are all things that is no point just giving out because you need to really know what you're doing when you use these kind of things uh, because otherwise uh, you might end up with a, a slightly screwed x -Plane. Therefore Let's not start asking about the settings. I also can't show them to you because all these settings that I have applied are under the hood. There's nothing you can see from, from the menu which I can show you uh, other than that I actually have more anti-aliasing options because uh, it is possible to add them in the settings text file. And I also have more uh, number of world objects settings. I found this uh, on the forum explain org someone um, who has, with some knowledge obviously of how, how the settings TXT works, has actually extended the possible options. It is dynamic it seems. You can you can add more positions here. Um, it's just that they're not being displayed um, because it only has labels up to the maximum but the maximum is not now your maximum. It is actually, it's just one setting towards the middle of a range of settings. So I, uh, I used this this idea uh, when I understood what, what the guy was doing there and uh, I created my own. Uh, also the same, he, ha he added another anti-aliasing setting which probably I don't even need but um, we have now more options also with the anti-aliasing. So th there's a nice combination now of uh, anti-aliasing and, and uh, other settings and I kind of made use of that. Again, for the majority of you out there, I'm probably already talking kind of tech Google, so um, there's no point me going into this, okay? It's far too, would be far too long, I would have to explain far too much and you can't just take these settings and it will work great on your machine. Um, I might maybe do some videos in the future where I try to explain at least some aspects of it uh, but uh, we're not there yet and this video is actually about Ultra Weather XP therefore I stopped now talking about the settings apart from these are for me are now um, benchmark settings and uh, as you can see we get a certain a certain frame rate and I'm actually now going to unpause the simulator I'm getting a, a frame rate in, in this setup looking from the outside. It's, this is actually what uh, you get when you're inside and you can see that there is quite a drop. The reason for that is um, that the Zebo has some impact 
on on the renditions okay uh, and as soon as I'm in there uh, when I actually look up you can see that there's a drastic increase in frames the reason is that the displays here some stuff here uh, even if not turned on draw an awful lot of uh, resources um, I'm not on the latest version of Zebo because tell you the truth <laughs> There's one coming out every two hours, kind of. <laughs> At least it feels like that, which I don't criticize. It's great, but uh, I just can't follow it. Um, therefore, I'm probably already, I don't know how many versions behind. And it could well be that in the next versions, there are some optimizations that uh, might not cause this huge drop. But I don't want to use the Zebo inside cockpit uh, frames for comparing um, the ultra weather with standard weather because it wouldn't be fair anyway. Therefore, I'm actually going to use this outside view that uh, we've just seen. Okay, and I'm also going up a little bit because the thing is, the, f the higher up I am, the, f the more objects I can see and the wider I can see here in this setup. And uh, yeah, so roughly here, I'm going to stay here. And now what I'm going to do is ultra weather XP is not yet here. What we're going to do is we're going to go through various weather settings and we're going to look at standard X-plane weather and standard X-plane clouds. What's the performance with these settings without any change, without change of position and, and any other thing. What's the performance uh, from the benchmark for particular weather situations and especially how does uh, frame rates go down when I start increasing the weather load by putting on some weather which is uh, less than nice like this year. Okay, so that's the p idea. And what we can say is uh, quite nicely, I have uh, stopped I load you down here to do any changes. So this is at the moment, this is not doing any modifications. It's just sticking to an LOD radius of 4, which is, uh, let's say, a reduced number of objects in the, in the distance. And uh, it has fixed also the anti-aliasing, which is an HDR 4 SAA, FSAA and a 4 times anti-aliasing factor. So that's um, basically what I have at the moment which gives us a nice non-flickering display at about 30 frames per second. All right, so default nice uh, weather without any clouds and any rain and anything else is 30 FPS. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this here. I'm going to, well, no, 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 actually I don't do this, I actually take this slider and just put it onto Cirrus, which will create a slight Cirrus layer, which I'm going to activate and can probably look up a little bit and we should see some Cirrus clouds here. There they are. Okay. So let me look down again. No, I think it's like this and we can see that we are slightly below but not a lot because there's not a lot drawn anyway it's 29 fps let's say so there has been a very very slight drop due to some clouds being shown and it already indicates it is expensive to have clouds <laughs> in the simulator and uh, although there wasn't much of an impact right now uh, we shall see a bit more when we activate scattered clouds and well actually I'm surprised because uh, when I did this before <laughs> the impact was indeed a little bit more than that but yeah okay so not drastic uh, we seem to be again in and around 29 so the clouds we have right now and the settings um, seem to seem to be quite okay so we also stay at 29 FPS. Right. Interesting. <laughs> and that's uh, actually, this is going to show um, every time I do this, it, it seems to be very hard to hit the exact same conditions because things also change 
slightly when I start moving, you know, uh, looking a little bit left, looking a little bit right. You see, now we are at 29, uh, going like this directly. Um, so maybe I should try and do the following. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. No, that's not good. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Yeah, that's it. So, eight times back, three times up. Uh, eight seconds back, I mean, and three times up. So, with with this I should be able to recreate the exact position again or almost the exact position so we are now still at 2930 so that still holds right let's go to the next weather setting let's push this over and we are in broken clouds so we have 29 Yeah, it has gone down a tiny wee bit. The average is is bit down to t to about 28, 29. So a s very small, a very small drop, but not really drastic. Okay, let's continue. Flight configuration. Let's go to overcast. Yeah. Well, the average has definitely gone down to about 28. 28. Oh, let's see what's the average. I'm actually not showing the average. So, about 27.7. So, let's say between 27 and 28. Not a drastic drop at this position. And the thing is, this can look different in different angles and stuff okay so the there could be actually some some angles when you look at a certain direction due to more objects or some other reasons that could cause a further drop more than what we see now but if if we start this uh, we would never be able to compare anything so that's why i'm staying at this position and we're just noting that with every increase in weather settings we get a very slight at the moment very slight drop in frames next whoops flight configuration let's go uh, that was overcast yeah so let's go to low visibility which adds a layer of fog and again we are in and about 27 to 28 And I am just wondering, I am just wondering if iLogu actually messes with our settings. So, that's yeah, really. Let's turn this off. I'm going to turn um, the script off because I have a feeling that maybe iLogu is doing something at some areas that I don't want it to do. So just to make sure that we are not messing, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to start fly with Lua scripting again. So now I lot you is really gone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, set the weather back to the beginning just just to see. We have 30 to 31. Mm -hmm. Then flight configuration overcast. By the way, you see a drop during the time when it actually builds the weather, but as soon as everything has been established, we are back. So, no, I don't think that iLodu has, has done anything, but I guess it's, it's, it's better if I keep it like this. Now we go to foggy. And there it takes a moment, but then we are back with uh, 30 frames, 30 to 31 frames. Why? Because basically the fog covers a lot of area in the distance. So 
the graphic card doesn't need to draw a lot of objects that it would need to do when there is still visibility. Um, and therefore, with pure fog, without anything else, frames go up again because there is less to be rendered. As we can see, <laughs> there is not as much to see, which is the nature of fog, obviously. So that's why the frames go up there again. Although we have kind of worsened the weather, and now comes the ultimate. This is the thick thunderstorm, lots of clouds, and so on. So with my current settings, I am at a stable 30 frames with still a very good anti-aliasing setting which does not give me the crooked lines uh, an awful lot there are some small ones but uh, this is actually a very nice uh, anti-aliasing setting which which is pleasing to my eye and still keeps the performance in an acceptable range now 30 frames by the way is also the um, f the frequency or the, the speed with which i record therefore 30 frames in the simulator correspond nicely with 30 frames in the recording software. And uh, I guess that is that is quite important. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we have seen that uh, the various weather settings have not really had an impact on on uh, the frames, not a drastic one at least with the settings that I run right now. So I'm going to stop the simulator now and this is going to be an edited video. One of the few in the last couple of months that is actually going to go through a video editing process. Um, so you won't see this but uh, you will be. we will be back now with the simulator started up in the same situation but um, disabled okay eh. i mean with ultra weather xp not disabled that's the point okay yeah we're back and we are roughly at the same position with uh, ultra weather xp running in the, on the nicest weather. Um, I have reinstated uh, iLodU just because I made sure that um, iLodU is actually not messing with any parameters when it is uh, disabled from uh, from changing things. Therefore we have now the exact same conditions that we had when I left Xplain with the default weather depictions but we have a slightly higher um, frames per second. Now one of the reasons why the frames per second are a tony wee bit higher is that in the original settings we didn't have any fog, any any mist uh, in in the far back. Um, Ultra Weather XP turns on some kind of basic uh, fog or mist settings and uh, therefore we have less objects to render and therefore the frames actually in the same position do improve. Okay, and now let's go quickly through the various settings, flight configuration. Let's go to the setting for. Okay, and now let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I have to do this. Eight, nine, ten. So now you see this is there's a little bit of. Uh, Zero stuff. Um, so now we're back. So there's a bit of uh, cirrus clouds, but um, nothing wild. And obviously the frames, yeah, they, they may have gone down to 31 on average. But uh, when I look at the average value, it it kind of fluctuates between 31 and 32. So so it is still slightly faster than what we had due to the mist settings that we encounter here. All right, next, flight configuration, scattered. So now we get some scattered clouds. Yep, nothing fancy. Uh, oh, that was not good, that was the wrong one. 
one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Roughly back again. Because as I say, um, if you change things slightly, you might actually get some difference in the frames, but this should be more or less the same position. Now let's go to the next flight configuration. We go to broken, which is a few clouds more. And uh, what you can also re realize is not only does it draw now some clouds, but um, things have become a little bit darker as well. And there are actually cloud shadows turned on. In Skymax Pro, cloud shadows uh, were one of the things that killed my performance a uh, big time. But here there is a certain element of cloud shadow, whatever way he's done it, uh, seems to be relatively frame easy on the frames. And what we can see is our average is still about 31 frames per second. So we, we see the same kind of tendency. So, so far Ultra Weather XP has not made things worse. All right. Um, on the contrary, it's slightly higher, but then again, this is because of the mist settings. If I would do a similar thing uh, in the normal weather, I would probably get the same difference in frames. So the, the one or two frames that we see here, they're not due to Ultra Weather per se. Okay, let's continue. Flight configuration. Um, overcast. And now here it becomes interesting and um, very interesting. First of all, we had a considerable drop. No, not considerable. It's not true. We had about two frames or so on. So we were 28. But here we are still at 31 to 32. Well, 31. 31 frames per second. So we haven't actually seen a drop. All right. And the other thing is it got dark, which it did get also in, in normal X-Plane. Now, when you get your vanilla out of the box uh, Ultra Weather XP version 2.2 from the org store, there is a settings file in there which uh, causes overcast weather to be like night. So from one moment to the next, although it is 12 o'clock lunchtime in Germany, um, it got pitch dark, basically. I was almost like as if I had switched to night, which is not really realistic. So I was reading on the forum and the the guy who does this software, he is really good. He's responding quite well and he's, uh, he's giving us um, what happened now? I don't know. He's giving us uh, also files like that. What he did is someone else had the exact same issue and he says, well, it's far too dark and that's not good. And he actually gave as an INI file, which is an, a configuration file, which you need to put in your plugin folder. And that configuration file, and I'm c I can show a little bit more about that later, that configuration file actually uh, changed the setting and made things much brighter. And after I found out where the setting is that he changed, I actually vamped it up a little bit. I made it a bit brighter than he set because, uh, yeah, I think what you see now is a realistic darkness sort of when you have a completely overcast thick cloud uh, rain kind of rain carrying cloud uh, layer here um, and I think that looks quite good I'm not sure what you think but um, for me this actually looks really really good and as we can see the performance is still 30 frames a really stable performance. All right. Now, let's go to the next worse weather, which is, well, actually it's not that bad. It's the low visibility setting, which has a lot of fog. And as we can see, uh, very consistently, we are still in and around 31 frames. So although we are now at, at a different, slightly different type of weather, frames haven't changed at all so so far we have stayed on the 31 frames per second so whatever this guy does in in his ultra weather xp hasn't got a lot of impact on the rendering 
which I find really really good right okay let's go to the last to the no actually I think we have another one here which is foggy and there we've gone up a little bit like we did the last time back to the 32 frames per second due to the simple fact that uh, we can't even I think we can see even less than we could before <laughs> so this is really heavy heavy fog oh my god I don't really, I don't think I want to fly enough kind of weather and uh, the last one is the stormy and that is where usually frames drop a lot um, it did a little bit on on standard weather but not that much and again we are at about 32 on average so absolutely amazing now again this is a comparison uh, I, I've given you a particular situation with a particular setting and because uh, I need to do some kind of benchmark I need to have something where I can compare and uh, yeah this gives this gives a good indication that ultra weather from a from a rendering impact point of view um, is actually quite good right now let's uh, let's forget about the the, the frames and uh, let's have a look a bit closer into what we can do with um, with ultra weather and for that I'm going actually go down now and I'm going to look up and we're going to have a, a bit of a look at various settings uh, and and possibilities that you have and for that purpose I'm going to go back to the clear weather okay ooh nice so first of all um, the sky is actually quite bright and that has probably to do with the fact that you can also change the sky colors now let's call up the interface that's the ultra weather XP interface and uh, yeah it is pretty simple so for example here we have the sky colors you can pick from 12 different uh, sky color schemes and the thing is in X-Plane 11 and I think also in X-Plane 10 for which this plugin is available as well you can actually go um, I'm not sure wh where it is in, in X-Plane 10 but here you go to show sky colors you get this explain 10 ish looking <laughs> menu all right and what you can do now is you can actually go and iterate through your sky colors okay so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to go into the dusk dawn into a dusk dawn scenario and then we try and see if we can uh, so where's the Sun uh -huh, there it is so let's see so let's take this and you can see how the Sun comes up and uh, then at some point gets bright but a bit further down yeah look at that really nicely done but when it's down here you can hardly see the Sun and it is kind of reddish so this is sky color set one what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to sky color set 2 I say reload then it takes a wee moment and we have a completely different sky color set which is uh, different <laughs> and basically what you need to do now is you need to um, go through your various sky colors and pick the one that you like most and to tell you the truth I actually forgot because I put back the default settings I think I think it was this one here that I liked I think or was it five let's let's have a look at five yeah I think it was five because we have a slight uh, pink pinkish but not too much and and a bit of the orangey stuff as well um, so I quite like this sky color 
and you can see how the sun gets uh, yeah this this effect that uh, you have kind of a blinding sun also very nice and yeah so that's the sky colors summer and to tell you the truth with these settings I hardly I hardly need um, blue FX because I use blue FX uh, to get the kind of summer and sun glistening look uh, into the simulator and I have a feeling that with these settings th th these get really nicely close to what I want it to be and by the way we can see the moon there um, yep all right so let's leave it at that now let's go and get some clouds into the sky and for that we're going to use the scattered not uh, or let's let's use the broken because there is more clouds in the broken scenario so let's have a look at the default cloud set and I'm going to move this over a little bit I'm going to close this and before we start switching through clouds what I would do is that I show you a little bit um, what you can do so one of the things you can change is you can change the cloud brightness okay you can make them really dark or you can make them as bright as the particular texture allows you to do it. I have it at in and around 80%. The other thing is the cloud shadow power. Um, let's see if we can if we can see the effect here. Actually what we have here is the terrain mist. So what we have at the moment is a value of 44%. So if I turn if I turn this off um, then the mist goes back and we actually have a slight drop in in frames because now there are more objects to be rendered if you turn this switch on it will look at your current weather settings and it will try to create a fog layer which represents the visibility that the weather report says so if it's something like 10 miles or more than 10 miles it will try and come up with something that is near what uh, the weather report says if you want to control it yourself or if you don't want that much of a, a fog layer you can use this this here and you can kind of open it okay so now I've, I've turned it off just for us to maybe have a better look at the cloud shadow thingy because we do have cloud shadows and I need to now find out if we can see them um, so the first thing we do is that we turn them off okay so I've turned them off now and I think we have a cloud over the airport we do so if I go now and bring the power off you, you see how it gets darker slightly so there's a kind of a um, distinct shadow here and it's a bit brighter here it's a bit darker here but it's not very pronounced still things get a little bit darker when a cloud comes over which is good and it doesn't take a lot of frames it's not that it takes a lot of frames and what you can do is you can it make it more pronounced by using the shadow resolution now if you do that though um, your frames will drop a little bit if you do it like this because um, it will need to render those and the more resolution you put into the shadow the better it will look yeah but uh, also the more frames you will use so I use about f the middle and that gives me a good compromise because we still can see the kind of darkening effect of the cloud but uh, it's not too bad the next thing you can change is the amount of clouds if you put this down you have less clouds and um, you might actually no, you don't really see a difference. No, so the amount of clouds just is a visual thing. It doesn't have. It doesn't really impact the frames, as we can see, drastically. Um, so, if you have a cloud layer, you don't really like uh, how it looks. It's either not enough clouds for your taste, or maybe too much. Yeah. What you can do here is you can bring it down a little. Oops, that was the wrong one you can bring it down a little bit then you get less of the clouds rendered you have more holes 
or you can bring it up and that means you have less holes in the cloud layer okay again you need to kind of find a, a reasonable value this looks like a, a pretty good option size of the clouds I have that at zero percent I use sort of the original size but you could actually create a thick a thick cloud layer um, by making the change yeah, you so you could kind of bloat up your your textures a bit and create a different kind of, of cloud layer right you have to play with this uh, I'm not yet sure how I should use this and should I really use it so I leave it at zero at the moment and then there's also something I'm not 100% sure I really understand cloud smoothness um, yeah um, I leave that at zero <laughs> and there's this extra blending and I think we might not have the right setup at the moment for this option to be visible what it does um, maybe we see it at other points I have not yet quite fully understood why would I turn this on and what benefit does it give to me um, fact is uh, if I turn it on nothing happens and also the frames stay the where they are hmm. so I don't know now the same thing that you had with the clouds uh, with the with the sky colors we can change actually the cloud uh, texture and there is by the way on the forum explain org there is already an updated set of advanced clouds from the developer um, version 1.3 just go on the forum and look for ultra weather xp clouds and you will find it take the current version which is 1.3 and it replaces all the uh, the the PNGs, the clouds, Puff Five PNGs in in the in the plugin folder, and then you get advanced clouds in two resolutions, 2048 and 4096. Now, because I'm a little bit challenged when it comes to video RAM, even with four gigabyte, I am sort of still at a lower kind of um, at a lower kind of uh, PC here. Uh, I use the 2048 what you see here is actually the 2k resolution you could though if your system doesn't face any issues you could actually use the 4k right up to you uh, you may not want to uh, replace the clouds at all but there must be a reason why the developer put up um, a package on the forum explain org for replacement clouds and my thinking is probably he has improved on the clouds and therefore it makes sense to get it I, I actually didn't compare them so I <laughs> installed them and I have got the replacement clouds and yeah what you see is basically already the advanced version 1.3 clouds now if you want to change the cloud texture in explain 10 you need to actually restart your simulator in explain 11 it's not so bad basically what you do is you open the developer texture browser okay and in here you press cloud and then you see the cloud puff 5 PNG you go on that one then you can close this window and I actually always take this out alright because the only thing I do is I make a change here and then I press the reload button so let's do this I'm going to cloud set number two and now I'm pressing the reload button and voila you have the other cloud set and now I'm moving this out and I'm going to go through the cloud sets and tell you the truth a lot of these clouds don't look eh, well at least I don't, wouldn't want to use them that is an example this doesn't look exactly uh, I don't know it looks strange maybe it's the kind of set that you use for a specific weather maybe towering cumulonimbus or so um, and they're not mine let's say so let's take number three that is better so there is um, there's some grittiness to them as well so they look more like like clouds although there are some areas which I don't really like overly right this one looks not bad this looks actually quite usable yep like that one number four then number five reload Ah, so I think this one I like the most so far. Number five is probably going to be my default cloud set. Let's see, number six. Also not bad, not as gritty and 
not so many dark patches so this could be something for uh, for good weather clouds number seven um, no <laughs> don't like this one but that's preference you know everybody thinks differently about the clouds uh, this one also looks a bit flat to me so doesn't really cut it for me um, this could be a bad weather combination yeah so number nine could be a bad weather stuff find this a bit strange but okay number ten war 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 number ten number ten is usable so uh, so far I've noted down five six and ten for me let's have a look at number eleven mm-hmm quite okay and number 12 alright so this looks um, yeah this could be also for very I don't know I'm not sure what kind of weather situation this would match so I guess you need to really play around and, and really find out for yourself let's see if this blending thing edge blend extra blending uh, I, can't, I can't really see any difference uh, yeah the size the amount of clouds uh, yeah no so number 12 also doesn't cut it for me I think the one that I like the most is the number five or was it number six no it was number five I think number five is the one that I want to go for because it has a mix of slightly darker clouds and brighter clouds. Now the same way I've done the the cloud stuff, you can also do the water thing. There are these six settings. Um, I actually do prefer green, and in order to um, yeah, you can't we can't see this now because we're not at the water. But basically, what happens is uh, it replaces the water texture and all your waters. If if they're not auto photo like this here, okay, um, they do actually get uh, switched to green, sort of a greenish color, which I personally um, like the most. Also, on inland water is often more greenish than than bluish, but uh, depends also on. on what kind of water we're talking about. Now uh, there is this background noise I'm going to bring it up a little bit so when you turn this on the WXP sound you have this kind of wind and, and far away distant traffic kind of ambient stuff you can change the volume uh, it's quite nice you don't have to have it but I have it on for the moment and this is actually the lights power for that we need to go into the dark and let's have a look um, maybe we can find an area with a bit more light there okay so see what the what the difference is you can change the intensity of the of the lights on the streets and uh, I guess also on the airport yeah at least the default lights um, yeah and I leave this as a relatively relatively uh, medium to high setting now there is another thing and that is according to the documentation they have done something to improve the shadows in the cockpit so um, what weather settings do we have broken I'm going to turn this off so that we have good sunshine and now I'm going to try and get some shadows so what they claim is and for that we need to hope that we get some shadows in here that means uh, yeah, seems to be a bit No. Ah, 
there's the shadow. Where they claim that they have improved the shadow of in inside the cockpit. Aha, so here I can turn shadows in the cockpit off completely, or what? Ah yeah, and then you get this kind of fuzzy, um, basic... Yeah, it's not really a shadow, it's more like the lighting. Um, but you can turn it on, then you get shadows, and they claim that they have improved the shadows, so it's not as ruggedy as it uh, can be. And then there is this distance, and that, that's actually a setting that I haven't yet quite figured out. Okay, but... I don't know... Is the shadow less ruggedy as it is? Well, to tell you the truth, it doesn't really look like it. So, well, interesting. I guess turning off the shadow probably gives you the one or the other frame back. Yeah, about two frames. Um, if you like that kind of uh, view, whoops. But to tell you the truth, I want shadows. Because they just add to the immersion here. Right, um... Yeah, that shows you roughly. Now, one thing I want to do is, I'm going to pause the simulation. I am going to set an overcast condition. Okay. Which immediately brings us back into the darkness of an overcast sky. I'm going to exit this menu, and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the map tool and bring us into flight level let's say flight level oops 280 so now this is supposed to be overcast um, yeah I wouldn't exactly call this overcast so let's see can we can we do something here? First of all, I'm increasing the amount of clouds. Uh, I could actually do a little bit here with the cloud size. That would improve things. We still have a lot of holes. Now, the holes might not be ultra weather. The holes might actually be the setting. So, why don't we go and customize this overcast thingy? This is an overcast cumulus. Yeah, it's overcast cumulus. I don't think I can do much more here. Right. I've seen better than that, so let's try and go to the bad weather low visibility. Ah, that's better. So, this is not necessarily um, ultra weather XP, but it gets parameters from Let's turn this on as well. Uh -huh. So, it gets parameters from the weather that you put in, that you inject, and uh, yeah, that's what it's doing then, right? Now, the big advantage of Ultra Weather XP is that this software does not come with its own weather generation, unlike X Enviro or SkyMax Pro with the real weather connector. Um, this program, similar to SkyMax Pro without the real weather connector, takes weather from outside sources, such as the settings I just used. Or what I could do now is I could actually go and say flight configuration, customize, um, ma, ma, no, 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 no. Yeah, I could do this as well, but I wanted to do that here. Match real world weather. I go done, I go change, and then we have to wait a little bit because it takes some time for the weather download, which is a substantial data file that needs to be loaded before we can see the weather. And when it's finally downloaded. <laughs> Eventually, sometime in the future, maybe soon. Do I need to unpause the simulator for that? I hope not. We should actually be seeing some weather. Scattered, much real world condition. Okay, so much real world condition is on. 
and it looks almost as if the weather is actually what we see okay let's try that again flight configuration I go to clear then I go to match real weather conditions and refresh now let's wait for this downloading the weather 50%, 100% done apply and indeed we have that kind of weather at the moment <laughs> so it is it is actually what we get from the weather download okay nice now why don't we try an external weather tool so I have FS Real WX and uh, I'm going to download the weather just to be sure that we have the current weather so now what I can do now is I can go to Echo Delta Lima Victor Niederrhein um, we have some winds we have a little we have a good visibility we have scattered clouds at 1600 um, yeah L looks like it's a bit less and what I can do now is I can go to my plugin because there's an XP real wix plugin I say connect server is waiting server not found I think I might have to change the settings let's see interface is client server okay probably uh, it looks options let's see explain yeah server ports transition altitude save okay so why can we not connect? Yeah, that's always when you do videos. Oh, it is connected. But FS Real WX doesn't know about that. So I start FS Real WX again, just in case. Because normally this works. Uh, looks like we are now connected. Very good. And uh, here now we get the and to tell you the truth I don't really like the I don't really like the clouds that we are having here so I might actually use um, I might use a different cloud so let's try the other cloud thing the number six that's more like it and what was the other one number ten I think number six. I like number six. Very good. So there you go. This is um, this is externally imposed weather. I'm not sure why the uh, flight sim weather is so strange, but it just goes to show that all the different weather injections possible NOAA plugin the FS global real weather the FS real WX and so on um, they do get their weather from sometimes the same sources sometimes other sources the weather from FX real WX at the moment comes from Watsim actually so that's the reason why I like this combination because real weather XP um, takes weather that ultimately comes from Watsim or Iveo by the way so in other words I can have the exact weather that Iveo and Watsim are having um, and uh, I'm because with X and Viro and other sources it could well be that your weather isn't at all what you see on Watsim which could mean that uh, the controller might actually bring you onto a runway with a not a headwind but maybe the other way around or a very strong um, crosswind so that's why I prefer this actually and uh, yeah I don't think I can show you much more now about uh, ultra weather um, so far I quite like it don't look at the frames here inside the, the Zebo. that's uh, something that I need to address differently and uh, what's one of the reasons why my I lodge you 
uh, is doing a job so when I turn this on I lot you will now start to bring down some rendering parameters and as you can see by just uh, scaling down on things like anti-aliasing and distance of visibility for objects and number of objects um, yep there we go we are in and around 25 to 35 frames so that's what I use uh, iLodu for so that add-ons like this here when I'm inside the cockpit um, yeah everything gets scaled so that I'm back in my roughly 25 to 35 frames that's what this is for okay I don't think I can show you much more uh, but I think it should have given you a good impression on what ultra weather XP is and what it isn't okay so it will not do your weather but it will display your weather and I think it does a very good job with it and um, looking at the frames that I get from ultra weather I'm pretty happy of what I have so far until next time.